Thank you very much. It is very hard for me to speak after such a sad speech, ladies and gentlemen, but at the same time, I'm very honored to be here in front of you in Geneva, Geneva Summit for Democracy and Human Rights. Uh, we are in a big family of freedom fighters from all over the world here. The family that knows the meaning of democracy and human rights by heart. The family that never surrender under heavy pressures of the oppressive governments. The family who has the courage to act by risking everything they have, including their loved ones. We will talk about the return of authoritarianism. It cannot return to our land because it has never left the country. Um, our democracy is 66 years old and had four military intervention in this period of time. And now we are living through a civil authoritarian regime in Turkey. In fact, what Atatürk, our founder of our founder, has created was a miracle. He created a secular country out of a fragmented empire. We have kept waited 66 years to be a member in the European family. Finally, people fed up waiting and turned its back to the European dream. Turkey has lost European perspective. Europe has lost Turkey as the only secular democracy with the huge Muslim population. This experience is, was so important for all of us so that its failure will be a victory for the Islamofascism in the East and Islamophobia in the West. <clears throat> Erdogan has never been a true believer of European Union or European ideals, but convinced the Europeans as if he had. <clears throat> Europe was looking for a leader less radical, a soft Islamist, and thought it, that it was Erdogan. And support him in coming to power and getting rid of the authoritarian army from Turkish political scene. Many liberals in Turkey also supported him. But in the lack of democratic institutions, the army was the only force who can stop the Islamists coming to power. After sending the soldiers into the, their barracks, thanks to the help of his partner, Fethullah Gülen, Erdogan got the full power. And two Islamists, namely Erdogan and Gülen, had run the country hand in hand for 10 years. Erdogan was governing while Gülen controlling the bureaucracy. But more power brought more problems. And Erdogan and Gülen have separated. A war has started between them. As they were very close in power, they knew each other's secrets. So all of a sudden, they started to reveal those secrets. Thanks to this fight, we learned about the corruption case of Erdogan and dirty operations of the deep state created by Gülen. On the 16th of July, we witnessed a military coup attempt, and thanks, thanks God we survived. Many people thought it was something like a Reichstag fire, but I guess it was a serious attempt. If they succeeded, we would have a military government now. But instead, what we have now is a police state. What a difference, and nothing changed for us. Who was a gift of God for Erdogan, as mentioned by himself, he used this opportunity to enhance his power and clear all of his opponents. He was lucky enough for hosting three million refugees to be used against Europe to buy their silence. He stopped the Europeans, Europe's criticism by using the fear of refugee flow. And now he is controlling the government, parliament, media, judiciary, police, and the army. And what we have is just this. This is the only power we have, which is powerful enough to fight against an oppression, oppressive government. Without the division of power and rule of law, now he's, he was poisoned by his power, 
declared a state of emergency and in a witch hunt, 15,000 people were arrested, 50,000 were sacked, politicians, journalists, teachers, writers, academics, lawyers. And under these circumstances, he decided to change the parliamentarian regime for a one-man system which will bring more authoritarianism. If he wins this, elect this referendum, he will have the power to abolish the parliament, declare state of emergency, control the judiciary, and the whole country. On the 16th of April, we will decide we will have the most important referendum in our history, and we will decide between democracy and dictatorship. And some of the people who dare to say no to dictatorship are in jail now, including leaders of the parliamentarians <clears throat> of the third biggest party and 150 journalists, including my paper's editor-in-chief together with my 10 colleagues of our paper, Jumhuriyet. Um, let me just a few words about my case. I wrote a story <clears throat> two years ago about Turkish intelligence, trucks, trafficking arms through Syria. It was an international crime and illegal attempt. And the story was true, never denied by the government. But instead, Erdogan threatened me, saying that the journalists who made this story will pay a heavy price. And I've been paying this price since then. Uh, I was, um, I faced four, four charges like spying, try to topple the government, aiding terrorist organization, revealing state secrets, and got five years and 10 months of imprisonment, and I spent three months in prison, revealed by, uh, released by the decision of the Constitutional Court, saying that what we have done was not a, an act of terrorism, but an act of journalism. I was attacked in front of the courthouse at the decision day, but I survived thanks to the braveness of my wife, who jumped on the attacker and survived and saved my life. We are still fighting, and now I'm in exile uh, in Germany, and we start a new media outlet there, which is uh, banned from the, before we started. But in Turkey, many courageous journalists start still fighting against this oppression, and fighting for democracy and human rights in Turkey. And this is very important opportunity for us. And I just want to say to you that please support those freedom fighters all over the world. Read and spread their articles, books, write letters to them, to the prison, go to their hearings, visit their families, and warn your governments not to support the oppression, but the freedom fighters. And UN um, should hear the sound of this alternative UN summit. And I guess Turkish government deserves a resolution and a special session for the human rights abuses. If not now, then when? And why UN is stand for? So we should keep this spirit alive, keep the team together here, and we should join our forces and step, stand up against aggression all over the world. Thank you very much.